M or M light? Do you need the full fat Coke or is the diet soda enough to satisfy the senses? Let's answer that question, shall we? My name's Tom and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Now, if you want to see a in-depth interior tour of both of these cars, I'll drop some links up in the top right hand corner. Today though, we're talking driving. Let's start with the stats then. Unlike the OG M2, this competition version gets a proper M engine. This is the S55 inline six. It's got 410 horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque. And it's a bit nuts. <laughs> the M Lite or M140i as it's known is a tuner favorite and it has the B58 inline six. And in this car, it makes 340 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. Then in terms of noise, they sound like this. So which one do you prefer? I'm actually leaning more towards the BMW M140i, you know. It has a beefiness to it that I actually really like. Definitely not because I own one. Anyway, how do they go? Let's do the 30 to 70 sprint and find out. So the M140i managed 3.82 seconds and the M2 managed 3.38. That's a pretty substantial difference and one of the main reasons for that is the lack of limited slip differential in the M140. It takes just that little bit longer to really put the power down, whereas the M2 just sticks like glue and gets the job done. Right, I think it's time for a bit of driving, don't you think? Let's settle this debate once and for all then. Is an M car really worth the money? Well, we're gonna start off in the 140, then immediately after I've driven this, we're gonna hop straight into the M2 competition so I can get a like-for-like -like comparison on the day in the same weather, and yeah. Anyway, the M140i driving around town, it's unbelievably smooth because you've got that ZF eight-speed torque converter gearbox, and you have torque full 500 newton meters of torque coming in at just 1450 rpm so yeah it's unbelievably smooth in terms of its drivetrain where it is a bit lackluster is its suspension as you can tell by uh, me just going over those speed bumps there it's a bit pogoey <laughs> i think that's the right way to describe it it's um i would say it's about as stiff as a full fat m car which surprises a lot of people. So yeah, it's, it's as stiff as an M2, but it doesn't have the finesse nor the refinement that an M2 has, where it kind of hits the bump, comes off the bump and immediately settles. It doesn't quite do that. It kind of hits the bump, pogo's up, comes down and pogo's a bit when you come down. And uh, yeah, it's one of the shortcomings of the 140i, unfortunately, but it means you can spend more money fixing it and making it your own, which is great. Uh, and that's one of the things I really like about this car, actually. The thing is with an M car is that it's pretty much done from factory. There's not a lot you can do bar just kind of add more power. Whereas the M lights, they obviously leave a lot to be desired and therefore require a bit of fettling um, even after they come from the factory just to make them a bit nicer. We're not going to focus too much on parking and driving around town today just because that's not really the point of this video. Mainly focusing on how fun they are to drive and how they compare just a little bit on a daily basis. Right then, coming out of junctions with start stop off because everyone hates that. Give it half throttle and a bit of tyre slip. <laughs> Yeah, having an open diff doesn't help, but it still puts the power down fairly well, I will say that. And 
we are on the original Super Sports for this car. But yeah, we're on the original Super Sports for this car, and yeah, unless they're boiling hot on a track, they don't really do much. As, you know, we're sitting in, what is it, five degrees outside today, and it's damp and greasy, so there's just gonna be no grip, which for most isn't great. For me, though, I quite like it because it's fun. <laughs> anyway, let's now reset our trip computer because this is where the M140i is quite substantially better than a full fat end car. If you're looking for a car to do motorway, blah, 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 if you're looking for a car to do motorway miles in, the 140i will do crazy MPG figures, especially at higher speeds. Even above 70, it will do well over 30 MPG, which is just crazy. I mean, for me, I think the reason that is is because it's got so much low down torque, and it's just quite a small car with a big engine so it's just never really trying unless you've got your foot down so it can just pump out crazy numbers plus you've got an eight speed gearbox so you're sitting at like 1500 revs at 70 miles an hour anyway before we um, put the proof in the pudding let's take this thing round a roundabout and see how it handles okay then it's sports plus that sharpens up the throttle response, gets the traction off, but stability still on. We drop a gear in the gearbox, get heavier steering, and then if I flick it over into S, it drops another gear, makes the gear shifts even sharper, and then, of course, I can go into manual if I want, which I am going to do, because taking control of this gearbox is very nice, even though it's a torque converter. Right, let's give it some. Bit of wheel spin, obviously. A lot of wheel spin, Lee. <laughs> and yeah, that's about an eighth of the throttle. And finally, as soon as you get to 70, it starts hooking up. <laughs> yeah, super sports are not great in cold weather. But, it's miles per mile, am I right? They are fun. Anyway, before I absolutely destroy our fuel economy figure, let's go into Eco now and uh, see what this thing's like on the motorway. This is where it kind of does just really beat an M car. Right then, coming onto the motorway, obviously you've got loads of low down torque, so you basically just tickle the throttle and this thing just easily gets up to speed, even in Eco, even though it deadens the throttle a bit. I mean, it's just got so much grunt, this thing. It is mad. And yeah, once you are on the motorway, it's fairly quiet, very little road noise, very little wind noise. And the only downside, again, is that suspension. It's just not quite good enough for this chassis. It just bounces over certain bits in the road. It's not the worst suspension in the world, and you certainly can live with it. It just feels like a fairly sporty car but it would be nicer if it was just a bit more compliant a bit more refined I'd say that's where the M2 is a bit better it just has a bit of a more sophisticated ride quality no matter what speed you're going where this is better than the M2 though is in terms of road noise now because the M2 has basically every part of the chassis connected directly to suspension components you know there's very few rubber bushes between things or if there are rubber bushes they're quite a bit firmer it means you get a lot less road noise coming to the cabin which is very nice because you can now chill out in the 140i and um, yeah it's just it's just great for long journeys really is fantastic and as you can see already we're about to smash through 30 hit pg just like that and that's going to keep on climbing i won't be surprised if we get a clear run today that you might even see 45 miles per gallon but proof is in the pudding let's go do that now and see what this thing can manage short just to save a bit of time and still this thing is doing 41 miles per gallon and that figure is actually still going up and that's just over like 12 miles of driving that's absolutely crazy so yeah if you want a car that's fun and 
good in terms of MPG if you're doing a lot of motorway miles and dropping GoPros then the M140i is an absolute beast an absolute beast saves you money at the pumps if you're doing a lot of miles yet yeah, it's still so much fun anyway let's get onto a proper B road now and see how this compares to an MT Alrighty then, back into Sports Plus, gearbox into Sports and Manual because we want those nice fast shifts. Of course traction is off but stability is still on. Car's there to catch you if you need it. Let's have a little taste of this thing shall we? <laughs> it's very easy to break traction in this thing, I'll give it that. And um, unfortunately that does scare quite a few people. Because even in, say, third gear, yeah, it breaks traction. And a lot of people get scared of that and end up binning them. So it's a car you kind of have to know what you're doing in. Once you get used to it, of course, or if you're coming from a rear-wheel drive car and you know how to do a bit of drifting, you'll be absolutely fine. It's got an e-diff, so it uses the brakes to try and mimic a proper limited slip differential. It tries, it doesn't really work. <laughs> you know, it it's there and it's like a limited slip diff that really needs servicing, is the way I'd describe it. Let's do a little sound check through here. Oh, look at that. It's quite interesting. It's like a really lazy, proper M engine. It just has this effortless torque feel to it that I really do love. And third gear is just monstrous in this thing, absolutely monstrous. But yeah, coming around corners like this, you can't just plant your foot. You have to, yeah, be a little bit careful. As even well above 70, this thing will easily break traction. And yeah, one thing to note with this car is whilst it's very good at doing good economy figures when you're not driving it hard, when you do start driving it hard, those figures will plummet through the floor. As you can see, we've already lost 5 mpg, and that's going to keep going down into the low 20s, if not high teens. Um, but you know, smiles per mile, and it is a big engine after all. It's just nice that it gives you the best of both worlds, I think. In terms of chassis, the suspension is still pretty lackluster. Um, but yeah, it's still fun because it's rear wheel drive and it's got a lot of power. <laughs> so you can't really complain at all. But it's just like, even in sixth gear, so if I slow down to like 50 miles an hour, plant my foot, and it's just effortless. Just effortless. Brakes. BMW only really put the good stuff on the proper M cars, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, you know, it stops the car well, but it doesn't have the best feel. And that theme kind of plays out throughout the whole M Light experience. Not a lot of feel, but does well, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I think in terms of sound for a stock car, sounds pretty good. <laughs> it's, just, it's just all over the place. These tyres really have no grip at all. To be honest though, that makes it quite good fun. Oh dear, I am going to have to get some new sticky stuff for this GoPro, aren't I? But anyway, yeah, suspension really is the only shortcoming and uh, it'll make itself very apparent when we get on to a little B road in a minute. But the drivetrain is just, I think it's probably one of, if not my favourite drivetrains out there. It's just so good, so predictable and just so powerful and obviously very, very tunable. This car can make silly figures on stock internals. And uh, yeah, if you're mapping this thing, 
you need to focus on the chassis first, I will say that. You need proper suspension and uh, you definitely need a limited slip differential if you're making this thing uh, pretty powerful. Also, some good tyres. My personal M140i, I'm running Michelin PS5s and I find for the UK they are absolutely perfect because, oh dear, I really am going to have to change the sticky stuff on that. But yeah, PS5s are an absolutely awesome tyre for this car because if you're driving on the road, you're never going to overheat them in the summer, but they have insane levels of grip in the wet, insane levels of grip. And uh, yeah, you really don't want the Michelin Pilot Super Sports on this thing because they're just not brilliant. Anyway, let's take this thing to a smaller B-road now and see how it does there. All right, back into Sports Plus, into manual again. Let's have at it. Wheel spinning, wheel spinning. <laughs> Lots of wheel spinning. But it's quite a lot of fun, really. <laughs> you really, really have to watch your speed in this thing because it's just a monster. It wants to be driven hard 24 seven, this car. corners like this you just tickle the throttle <laughs> oh god it's good it is so good okay can we hit 60 before the corner let's go i'm just planting my foot oh horrible wheel hop oh there we go we did hit 60 And that's the thing you notice, without a limited slip diff, it's just not quite as refined. And again, that's the theme with the m Line. It's got the horsepower, it's got the torque, but it is just missing that element of sharpness, refinement, and predictability that an M-car has. <laughs> but it feels quite naughty. It's a bit of a bad boy car, this. And it is quite good fun. Do you know what you can still place it where you want it the suspension still deals with bumps just about good enough and my goodness for me honestly it feels like a package that needs a bit of fettling but then it will just be a complete package and there's not really anything like it it's so satisfying looking at a boot that can be used to chuck a load of crap in and just having a big inline six with a turbocharger that puts out silly horsepower figures with an email. Oh God, it's so good. Anyway, is there something better than this? And is it called the BMW M2 competition? I think it might be. Let's hop into it now and have some fun. Now then, immediately as you get in the M2 competition, it's just more visceral, there's more kinds of sounds coming into the cabin there's more induction noise for the engine there's more vibrations as well you can feel that everything's just a bit stiffer a little bit tighter and then the next thing you notice is everyone looks at this car i think this generation of m2 coupled with this color and the wheels it does look really really good i think i think the only one that beats it for me would be Chris Harris's green with gold wheels BMW M2 CS. I think that was probably the perfect spec for an M2. But this just looks absolutely awesome. And it feels awesome from behind the wheel as well. Immediately the steering, there's just no delay from when you turn the wheel to when the wheels actually do stuff and there's quite a bit more texture as well. The 140i does have some feel, but this, you kind of feel every individual pebble coming through the road. And it's just, I don't know, it's like a vibration thing. You can just feel more. You just feel more connected. And then coming out of junctions, half throttle, 
limited slip diff, does the job well, puts the power down, even in the wet. And yeah, that's where it is a bit better than the 140i. The 140i, you get that initial slip, and then that e-diff, the fake limited slip diff, comes into play and acts a bit like a regular limited slip differential. But there's a delay to that. Proper mechanical limited slip diff, no delay, immediately locks up and sends all the power to the ground, and that's what you want. Now then, where it's not quite as good as the 140i is on fuel, and it's, shall I say, quite a uh, staggering difference. Let's reset each of the computer and we'll see what we get on the motorway. Um, but yeah, this is quoted on the combined cycle as only getting 28 miles per gallon, which is not great, considering the combined cycle for the 140 is 40 miles per gallon. That's 12 miles per gallon more. But uh, we are going to put this thing to the test and see what kind of MPG we get on the motorway. Obviously, before that, let's get this thing to a roundabout, get it in MDM, and have some proper fun with it. But yeah, you can tell, going over this road surface especially, there's a lot more vibration coming into the cabin. And it's strange because the suspension is... Well, it, perceivably, it's the same in stiffness, but it just has a slightly better ride quality, even though there's more vibrations coming into the cabin. I think that's more to do with all the chassis components just being directly connected. But anyway, let's get this thing in MDM and have some fun. Right, in MDM, if you don't know what that means, that is M dynamic mode, which is configurable, so you can change things like your uh, the weight of your steering, the throttle response, the engine, and a couple of more things. Also, how much traction you have and how aggressive the gearbox is. This is full attack mode, basically. And as you can tell, it sounds like it. <laughs> but yeah, even just touching the throttle, <laughs> this thing goes sideways. That was literally just touching. Just touching. If I plant my foot, yeah, lots of wheel spin and you eventually have to come out of it, otherwise you are just going to end up in a ditch or sideways into a tree. But the gearbox, it's just a bit sharper being a dual clutch unit. It just has a bit more bite to it. The one downside is though, it is a bit jerky in traffic. Now the BMW M4 that shares the running components with this car is a bit jerkier I would say interestingly I feel like the M2 competition has just been calibrated a bit better and I think because it's just got a little less power the gearbox is having to deal with well a little less power but as you can see I'm in first gear now and yeah it kind of does this bucking thing if you drive it like a normal car it teaches you very good throttle control so you literally just tickle the throttle and it kind of gently goes into gear, but it is something you have to learn, and it can take some drivers a while, um, or it just puts a lot of drivers off the car, actually. Anyway, let's now go into regular drive. No eco mode on this thing. At least I don't think so. Let's just... I know. Efficient. Well, that's just regular drive, yeah. So, inefficient, in drive with the gearbox in its most chill setting, and even then in traffic it's still you know okay let me just put my foot down like a normal car yeah it kind of just it jerks quite a lot so yeah you do need to learn throttle control in this thing once you learn it though it's not too bad it's definitely better than the um, f80 series m3 but it is one thing to keep in mind so for traffic the 140i is definitely better and generally, just as a daily, I would say the 140i is just a bit more livable. The uh, road noise levels are a bit higher in this thing, which you'll notice in a minute when we get on the motorway. And the wind noise is actually not that bad, even though you've got extra bits um, adding to the aerodynamics on this thing. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's get on the motorway and see what this thing's like. So coming onto the motorway, even in efficient or regular drive, you do notice something and that's that the 140i feels slightly more potent low down which is interesting because this is a twin turbo car and it's got more torque and the power comes in very low 
so there's no reason for that but it does just seem to lag a little bit more than the B58 engine in that 140i does which is interesting obviously once you're above 2000 or sorry once you're above 3000 revs this thing is a, a totally different animal shall I say but yeah cruise control whack it on 70 miles an hour and I will say yeah you do notice there's a little bit more road noise but it's not a huge amount more I'd say it's about 10% but it's definitely noticeable the one thing you do notice is the steering and if I just hold the wheel like that you can notice there's a lot more vibrations coming through the road and if you're driving over longer periods it actually does wear your hands out a bit because I don't know if you can notice it you just have these little vibrations coming through and that's purely because the steering is just solidly connected to the front wheels effectively or much more solidly connected than it is in the 140i and that's where you get the texture from but as good as it is as good as it is when you're on a b road it's not so good for longer journeys as yet yeah, it just wears your hands out but in terms of seats yeah they're just as comfortable as the m140i seats are you can sit nice and low in them and yeah overall it's a, a pretty nice car to do quite a few miles in you know we're not talking base model VW Polo just yet <laughs> but the 140i is definitely just a bit more relaxed the thing is though as soon as you turn into any single corner in this thing let's dive into this corner here yeah front end bike is just so much better in this than it is in the 140 it just feels like you have so much more grip because you just do Maybe not over the rear, but over the front, you've definitely got substantially more grip than you do in a 140. There's just zero understeer in this thing. To understeer in this, you would have to go zero power, full lock. And even then, I think it would still oversteer. Anyway, let's get onto the motorway now and see what kind of MPG we manage. See if we can get close to the 40 MPG we managed in the 140i. Okay, so there's your proof. You do about 10, or well, eight to 10 MPG less than the, the equivalent BMW M140i or 240i. So yeah, there's a bit of M tax involved in that one. Plus, when it comes to servicing, you've got bigger brakes, obviously wider tires. Everything's just a bit more expensive with an M car. But when it comes to a twisty road, is it all worth it? Let's go to one now and find out. Okay then, let's get our MDM on. Throttle response increases, gearbox is sharper, and induction noise is present. Oh, it is good. It's just, yeah, for every shortcoming it has on a long journey, this is where it just becomes all totally worth it. <laughs> oh, oh, wee! <laughs> Little bit of slip there. Flip the throttle. <laughs> oh, it's predictable, it's fun, it is so, so good. Oh, wheel spin. <laughs> yes, in damp, greasy conditions, you do have to have very good throttle control. It's not a car you can just plant your foot in. Right, sound check time. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I think the 140i sounds better than this. Genuinely. I think it sounds a bit beefier. This is, yeah, I think the S55 just has a tinny sound to it that I'm not too keen on. It's not a bad sound, but it's just not as good. Yeah, this is why you have to be careful.
careful, that was only half throttle and if you didn't know what you were doing, you could have easily ended up in a hedge there. And remember, we're in MDM, this is where the car is there to kind of save you a bit. With traction fully off, yeah, it's a complete hooligan this car. Please do not do that on a public road, it's just dangerous. Even if you're an experienced driver, honestly. But for stuff like this, it's just... <laughs> oh, it feels great, it really does feel fantastic. And the thing is, you don't even have to be going fast in it to enjoy it. It just has a really nice feel from behind the wheel. Everything from the steering to the feel of the suspension going over bumps. Again, the texture through the steering. The way it brakes traction compared to the 140 is nicer. And it is more predictable. The sound of the induction noise from the engine because you've got no insulation under the bonnet. It's just a more visceral, more pleasurable experience. <laughs> It's that minutia of difference in the steering that I just love. But it's a very rare thing to put your foot down in this. Still haven't done it yet. <laughs> Still haven't done it. You just cannot put the power down in damp conditions. But I do not care one iota. It's so much fun, this car. It's honestly, I can't think of a car that's actually more fun than this. Now a lot of people will say you can make a 140i as good as this, and I think you almost can. I don't think you can get all the way there, but you can get 90% of the way there. I think there is just fundamental differences in the welding of the chassis of this thing that definitely make a difference, and the geometry of the suspension that definitely makes a difference. Oh, there's just more feel. It's, it's a more emotional experience, and it gets even more enhanced when you take it to a smaller, tighter road, because you really do have to have your wits about you. Let's get to one now, and I'll show you what I mean. Right, and then down our favorite little B road. Let's go. Yeah, that's about an eighth of the throttle. I know it's more responsive in MDM, but still, it is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Full throttle now? Yep, immediate, immediately lights up the tyres. Oh, that downshift noise is incredible. Even from second gear, just... Yeah, those, you just can't do it. But the brakes, yeah, they're a lot sharper than an M-Lite. One thing I love about MDM as well is it's not that intrusive. It's only there when you really do need it. Right then, can we hit 60 before the corner? Let's go. Wheel spinning, can't put my foot down. There we go, had to short shift, and that was about a quarter throttle, and we still made it. Just goes to show how much power this thing has. It is ridiculous, this car. Okay, in third, sometimes you can put the power down. But where this thing really shines is its suspension. It's just leagues and bounds ahead of the 140. When you turn into a corner, it's just it's straight into the corner. And when you hit a bump, it doesn't get unsettled. It doesn't pogo. And for me, that makes it worth it a load over the 140. It really does. It's just this. It's just this turn in, especially when you come over a bump. <laughs> you can just feel exactly what the car's doing. It's just brilliant.
like two to four thousand RPM, it sounds quite good, and then from six to seven, it sounds quite good. But from four to six, I don't think it sounds great. It sounds very tinny, especially when you modify the exhaust. And there's a little a little wall here, so we can do just a little bit of a sound check. <laughs> just it just immediately lights the tires up. It makes me do naughty things, this car, I have to admit. But, in conclusion then, is it worth the M-Tax? Is it worth the initial disparity in price? It's a tough one to call, but I think there really is nothing that quite compares to a full M-Car. Yes, you can modify the M140i up to its eyeballs and make it a hilarious car. But it's only ever about 90% of the way there. I think the fundamental chassis differences that are in the M2 are still apparent. It's that 10% that really does make all the difference. You know, it's like going from A4 Wagyu beef to A5. Both great steaks, but the A5 is just that noticeably little bit more tasty. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed this comparison slash review. If you did, give it a like and why not subscribe as not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale, which as of this moment includes the cars in this video. A very nice, low mileage, very well kept BMW M140i where the previous owner was, well, a pensioner, I'll put it like that, and he basically just did motorway miles. Cars being looked after incredibly well as has this BMW M2. And yeah, the links for both cars will be down in the description. If they're not, then sorry, you missed it. The cars have sold. But don't worry, there's plenty more stock on offer. If you click the link in the description below, you can just have a look at everything we've got for sale. And yeah, there's a nice range of stuff. Everything from, you know, stuff that's about 10 grand, which is nice to poodle around in, perfectly good enough for daily drivers. And if you want to spend a lot more money, you certainly can if you want something like a Range Rover SVR. <laughs> anyway, my name's Tom and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.